Welcome one and all, I'm one of many millions of Dave. And I'm the only Jacob, pretty sure I got dibs on that. And today we're talking about the most common mistakes in PC building, from the mildly foolish to the downright catastrophic. Building your own PC is genuinely a very simple process, and as long as you follow the correct steps, uh, take your time and don't try and force things into the wrong holes. Yeah, top life advice there. It's actually very hard to go that wrong. Having said that, there are some very common mistakes that crop up time and time again, so we're here to make sure you don't fall foul of them. Yeah, we're ranking them in descending order of how simple they are to rectify and how likely they are to brick your PC. Yeah, of course, you'll never find us professionals making such mistakes. Didn't you recently kill a motherboard by forgetting plugging yeah, a water yeah, cooler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And didn't you also manage to destroy a £1,000 Nvidia Titan card? Little, little. And somehow you managed to set fire to an SSD, right? Like that deserved it. Ah. Forgetting the IO shield. Catastrophe rating. Mild annoyance. This is more annoying than anything else. The IO shield is a little metal cover that goes on the back of your PC case to cover the gap around the back panel of your motherboard. Yeah, unfortunately, once you've screwed down your motherboard, connected all the components and the different power cables, you're then faced with the tough choice of either living your, the life of your PC out with a massive gaping hole at the back or starting all over again. It's not really going to affect the performance of your gaming machine that much, but it may be dragging a little bit more dust, skin, hair, and general crud into your rig. Yeah, I mean, you could always style it out by pretending you were just increasing the airflow of your chassis, though. Monitor plugged into the motherboard. Catastrophe rating. Self-loading. There's no way to style this one out, however. Yeah, unless you've gone the high-end desktop route, plugging a Core Happy Threadripper or Skylake X CPU into your machine, chances are you're building a PC which has got monitor attachments on the back of the board. Yeah, it's really common for people to miss and ignore the graphics card sockets when they're plugging in their network and USB cables into the motherboard, and they just plug a monitor into any unused HDMI. Yeah. But if you've got a graphics card installed in your machine, however... And if you don't, then what the hell, man? Yeah, then, then that will take priority over any GPU components in your processor. It's an easy fix, you just have to swallow the shame and plug your monitor into the correct socket. Missed power cable connections. Catastrophe rating, sudden panic. Ah, the classic power cable conundrum. Not plumbing in the right power cables into the right components can be little more than a mild annoyance. But there are some situations where it can be more permanently damaging. Yeah, the most common missed power cable is the additional processor power point by the CPU socket. That will mean you get nothing out of your PC when you go to boot it up. It's essentially the same situation if you forget to power your graphics card. More damaging, however, is forgetting to power your CPU cooler. Or your water cooler's pump. Yeah, okay, that was how I managed to break a motherboard recently. Can we just move on? So yeah, if your water cooler's not working properly, you may still be able to boot up and start your machine. But the heat will keep building up and up and up until your PC eventually tries to save itself by turning itself off. For the most part, that's fine and won't result in any long-term damage. But if you happen to be flashing the motherboard BIOS at the time, that could be a bit more terminal. Thermal paste, none, too much, and in the socket. Catastrophe rating, deep regret. How much thermal paste you use and where is another incredibly common problem that besets us PC builders. Yeah, obviously the worst thing you can do is not use any at all. With your heatsink dry hump in your processor, that creates little air pockets in between them and can seriously affect the cooling performance of your chip chiller. But thickly spreading thermal paste over your processor, like Nutella on toast, isn't going to help either. There's a sweet spot for the amount of chip gunk you want to get onto your uh, CPU. Too little and you leave air pockets, too much and you'll start to uh, inhibit the thermal conductivity it's meant to enhance. Yeah, ideally you want to be using the equivalent of about two grains of rice set in the middle of your CPU's heat spreader. Uh, the very action of attaching the CPU cooler itself will spread it across the top. Yeah, the very worst thing you can do with thermal grease and the thing which, in all honesty, might be a catalyst for you giving up PC gaming forever, donning a turtleneck and buying a Mac, is putting it into the socket itself. Yeah, people have actually done that. Dicks. Leaving the Remove Me sticker on your CPU cooler. Catastrophe rating. Laughing maniacally to yourself. To protect the surface of your cooler's copper contact point, some ship with a plastic sticker attached to it, which you're obviously meant to remove. Yeah, the most painful part of this mistake is the actual sticker itself says in big letters, please remove before installing. Leaving it on creates a barrier between the CPU and the cooler, meaning it doesn't get the cooling it deserves and causes long-term damage. You may not realise that's what you've done until you come to replace the cooler and it's because it got so damn loud. Yeah, that's when you realise that the plastic's melted onto your processor and the damn thing's about to expire. If you're lucky, your cooler will come with thermal paste pre-applied, then you can avoid both of the last two issues. <laughs> up the CPU pins. Catastrophe rating, loud, snotty weeping. Yeah, there's no getting away from it. If you've got a discrete CPU and a motherboard, you're going to have to have contact points between them. With an Intel chip, the contact points are in the socket, and with an AMD one, they're on the chip. Neither is immune to a little ham-fisted PC building, rendering them more bent than a FIFA executive committee. Uh, allegedly. With an Intel build, all it takes is an errant digit dipping into the socket or a casually dropped CPU to crush half the contact pins. With an AMD machine, you can twist the pins out of recognition by trying to force them into the socket the wrong way around. Yeah, this can be really, really bad, and it's almost worse if you only twist a couple of the pins. 
because your PC may still boot, but you won't realise that you're missing a couple of memory channels or something. It's not the absolute worst thing you can do to your machine, however, it's still possible to bring the pins back from the brink. A credit card and a lot of patience is enough to be able to straighten the pins on an AMD chip, and with an Intel socket, a dual screwdriver should be small enough to get under the pins and lever them back into place. Not putting the standoffs under the motherboard. Catastrophe rating. All five stages of grief in quick succession. This is pretty much all the bad. Your PC case already has all the necessary holes drilled into it to allow any standard motherboard to, uh, to mount precisely. In order to make sure your motherboard, along with all its delicate circuitry and electrical goodness, is not directly connected with the metal of your chassis, they come with risers or standoffs. Yeah, these little copper adapters lift the motherboard away from the case tray underneath and stop the solder points on your board from making electrical short with the metal in your chassis. If you decide you're better than safety or the master of electrical current, then you can choose, like many before you, to simply screw the motherboard directly into the chassis. You little maverick. Yeah. Unfortunately, like many before you, this will not end well. You may find that out straight away as you boot your PC and there's a funny burny smell, a few wisps of smoke, and the sound of popping candy as all the components you've plugged into your PC go the way of common decency and empathy online. It's also possible that your machine will mostly work fine and you won't know you've created a ticking time bomb of component death and one day when something just shifts a tiny amount, makes that connection, everything will go up in smoke. Yeah. yeah, those little standoffs are kind of important because without them you run the risk of total system failure and cascade component bricking. So while we're always banging on about how easy PC building is these days, how it's like Lego now and everyone ought to have a go, there's still every opportunity to do something really stupid and blow up something valuable. Yeah, and those are just the most common mistakes that we've come across. So let us know what the worst PC building catastrophes you've seen or heard about are, and if you don't want to admit it yourself, just say it was a friend. And if you like what you've seen, give us the old like and subscribe, keep the tune to PC Games End here and on the website for more hardware and PC gaming good times. Yeah, so thanks for watching.